no punches um, on Otoado following Ghana's un unimpressive performance against Nicaragua in that uh, the last uh, uh, friendly game in Spain. Of course, a lot of them are out there. Some are people calling uh, for the sack of Otoado, saying that Chris Oto uh, should be given uh, the opportunity to take the Black Stars uh, uh, to the 2022 FIFA World Cup. And of course, also we'll be looking at uh, Otoado's response uh, after the game against Nicaragua. He said he is ready. For the 2022 FIFA World Cup, and that is more like a response to Kyle Dugdari because in our in our review of that game against Nicaragua, Kyle they said it seems like Ghana is not ready for the World Cup. But today, Otoado is expressly telling Kyle Dugdari that he is ready for the World Cup. And right now in Nigeria, we'll be talking about the NFL presidential election that is meant to take place on September 30. That election is looking likely that it will not. Welcome to Nigeria Super Fans Forum. My name is Folua Femi Ashalu. These are many more awards we have on the plate today, and of course, it's going to be another wonderful menu on the show. So, James Agore is in the studio. James, you're welcome. Thank you, Femi. So, how's it been? Yeah, uh, thank God. So, the leagues across Europe will resume. You resume, week, right? yes. Uh, the international break, uh, we also what went down, and uh, we can't wait for the for the leagues to, to kick off. Okay, so African stars, of course, they will get back to fashion. Kyle Dogundari joins us via video. Kyle, you're welcome to the show. Thank you, Femi. <laughs> it's not me, it's Otoado. It's not. It's actually not me, it's Otoado. Responding to you. I, to you. I, I take all in good faith, and it's all for the common good. Hopefully, Ghana will be able to do what we expect of 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 her. Thank you for having me. All, all right. Uh, before we talk about Ghana, let's uh, come back right here home in Nigeria. The NFL presidential election uh, is, was scheduled to take place on September 13 in Benin City, Edo State. Uh, but as uh, things stand, remember there is a court uh, expert uh, saying that that election should not take place. Of course, uh, recently the Minister of Sports uh, right here in Nigeria, Sunday Diary, uh, invited all the presidential aspirants. And one of them, after that uh, meeting, said uh, the minister warned them or told them to obey the court order and not even travel to Benin. Uh, James, I'll start with you before I go to Karate. Um, we, are all, we always find ourselves in this situation where there's always one issue or the other. There was supposed to be an election, uh, you, you know, yeah. so that the current dispensation of the NFF uh, administration can just, uh, you know, leave the scene. But I, I don't know if there's... A new any, development. Yeah. There's a new development... Uh, put aside that precisely. He, mm. he, he, in an interview, television interview, he said the minister told them not to go to Benin for that election, uh, James, because of that uh, court uh, injunction. <sighs> you know, it's anytime we discuss about um, Nigerian uh, issues, I mean, it's so tiring and uh, so frustrating, depressing, because it's always one issue to the other. I mean, I saw this coming. Um, I knew that. At some point, we'll get to this stage, and we are finally here because you can't overrule your the, the highest body in your country. You can't overrule whatever they. I mean, they, they said this can't hold, and you just have to. You just have to follow the court order. The the, the country's court way be bigger than whatever um, uh, court uh, coming from FIFA or whatever. So for me, um, it's another round of uh, we like a series now, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, it's so sad that we found ourselves in this situation. I mean, it's so I don't, I don't know how to how to put it. It's, it's because now it, it, for the sport minister to come out to say this now, you, 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 don't, you don't have any choice. You just have to follow what he said, and from there they now look at what and what to do. Because as it is now, I mean, I don't know how this is going to how you going to end now. Because we, we only know the beginning now. <laughs> you know the way things always unfold in Nigeria. So for me, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I, just, the, he has come out to say, for now, everybody should, should, should Maybe halt. Cool. Exactly. So they just have to follow what he said. And uh, from there, let's see what, 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 what we plan out. Mm. Kyle Day, I know your journey to talk about this. Of course, it's an issue that we've been talking about on Nigeria Super Fans Forum. Of course, you heard that uh, Akita Dari, Akita Saidi, that said, uh, from the diary, told them not to go to Benin, but precisely he said for their safety, because it is possible that uh, maybe uh, security operatives will even be at the venue of the election to ensure that that place uh, is not open for uh, activity on that day. But let's look at it kind of day. We always find ourselves in this circle, and we do not even know what is going to happen now. Maybe Pini will have to stay longer in the office than expected, because of course, we can't leave that place empty. Or maybe Mama Sanosi, the Secretary General of the NFL, will have to take charge of uh, the federation for the time being. But unfortunately, kind of again, we are we are where we used to find ourselves. 
Very excuse excuse me. But like you you said what I would have said that this is not new to us, it's not new to Nigerians. We are used to finding ourselves in this situation. Now you remember the last time I said it would be better to postpone the Congress, the elective Congress, since there's a court order to that effect, or else that court order will bog down the federation for the duration of of its uh, for for the for the entirety of its lifetime because everybody will keep going back to court uh, there's a subsisting court order xyz so for me i think the best thing is not to have the congress at all than to have a congress where a new president will be elected and then it will fall into the all the legal uh wahala that is out there so for me it's so unfortunate that we find ourselves here but i have a feeling that this was premeditated by some people so that they can sit tight in office. Because nothing that has happened that couldn't have been resolved weeks or months before now. But let's see how it turns out. Let's see how it turns out. It is a battle for me. It's not a battle for the office of president alone. It is a battle for the soul of Nigerian football. And if we allow the, the, the forces of evil to, to win, it will not put well for Nigeria. We should all rise up and say no, never again, to the forces of evil led by you know who. Okay, Kaude, just to um, uh, educate or enlighten our fans and, uh, of course, uh, some of us here, I, I do not know, but does this constitute uh, any form of, uh, in, of uh, uh, what do you call it now, of uh, in, uh, in, um, uh, interference, yeah, that's the word, interference in football by a civil court, you know, so that before we uh, come down on, uh, before FIFA's armor come down seriously on us. Femi, the issue of FIFA armor has been used again and again to threaten and make us uh, tremble in our boots. There's nothing like, we are talking about integrity of the game itself now. We are talking about, pe about people who have not been true to their oath of office. So I don't see any FIFA armor coming down on Nigerian football. Now, for the simple reason that if there's a court, the courts in Nigeria are superior to whatever pronouncement FIFA makes. Nigerian courts within Nigerian territory are superior to whatever pronouncement FIFA makes. So if a court in Nigeria says the Congress should not hold, then it will not hold until a superior court vacates that order. If a superior court does not vacate, like if it's the high court, then the Court of Appeal can vacate that order that will okay, go ahead with the Congress. If the Supreme Court insist that the Congress must not hold, it will not hold, because they are the courts of the land. In them, we repose the sovereignty of Nigeria, and FIFA cannot make any pronouncement that it goes contrary to what the law has prescribed in Nigeria. So for me, the law takes precedence, the Nigerian law takes precedence, not FIFA. So let's not even bring the issue of FIFA into this for now, Femi. Okay, uh, Nigerian football is seriously caught in traffic because remember we, we had the Supreme Court judgment against LMC and now this one against uh, the running of uh, the NFF itself. Well, only God will help us. Now, let's take a trip to Ghana because of course today we'll be lo uh, looking a lot more about uh, the fallout from the friendly game uh, uh, between Ghana and Nicaragua. And of course, some of our fans on, uh, on the review uh, we did for that game, of course, a lot of, a lot of you bought your mind and uh, spread this pleasure over the a poor, poor performance of the Black Stars. And on social media, of course, we follow it, we follow the lot of a, a comment and reaction after then. And Kyle did, like I said earlier in the opening, uh, in the opening statement, he said that he thinks Ghana is not ready for the World Cup. But of course, Otoado has come out to say he's ready. And if you if you uh, monitor very closely the line that is come up with most of the things that Ghanaians said about that game, is they said that uh, that uh, part-time coach will give you part-time results. And they are referring to Otoado with that phrase. Kyle, um, before I come to you, let, I'll quickly read some of the comments that uh, uh, I got online. They said, Chris, who team did yet? Carry team, give part-time coach. Another one says, uh, GFA president should think about Ghanaians rather than his selfish interest. Chris Uton is available. He can do the job better. Another one said, it's a proven fact that Otoado can't take us to the promised land. GFA should stop their selfish interest and give blasters to Chris Uton. Another one said, let the part-time coach step aside and let Chris Uton take over. Another one says, he can, he said, how can a proper nation appoint Otoado over Chris Uton? Otu, Chris said, Otoado is not yet a proper coach for this team. Now, the last one says, this team cannot even win the Ghana Premier League. Very funny comment. 
but uh, you yeah. see angry fans just uh, you know bringing barrage of uh, of uh, uh, disappointment uh, uh, disappointing statement of course I mean, that's predictable. Fans are football fans are fickle. All they need to turn around is just a good game and a good result. Once they get that, they are, see they are not trying to. They are just venting their anger, their disappointment, which we also, which we all felt uh, at the performance of the of the Black Stars. So it is a legitimate uh, uh, frustration that they are venting. And like I said, all you need to bring them back is do well in your next game, the friendly against Switzerland, play decently well, score good goals, and you see the fans trooping back to clap for you. We've seen this all over, the, all over the world, where a coach is deemed not to be good any longer because of adverse results. Then the moment they start winning, everybody gets back into the supporters' club. So for me, I think the fans have a reason, a legitimate reason to be angry very very legitimate one it is now left for the manager Otoado to do what is right gave them a team that is that they can't be proud of see nobody's saying this team cannot lose games they can't but then there are some games you lose because of your performance people will still stand up and clap for you that's where the kind of team we want Ghana to be for everybody we want Ghana to lose when they when they have to lose not every time but when they have to lose they should lose but with their heads I, I, that's what I think. Okay, I remember that we've discussed this issue before on the issue of uh, Otoado having to still work with uh, Borussia Dortmund and handling the blasters at the same time. I don't know if you could still remember, but now it seems that people are bringing it to the front burner. Yeah, for me, I, like I say, it boils down to the disappointment of the bad game against Nicaragua. They knew he was a part time coach when he won the World Cup ticket for them. They knew he was a part-time coach. Yeah, they knew he was yeah, a part-time yeah, coach when they took them to the Kirin. No, when they took them to the Kirin Cup, they knew he was a part-time coach. See, like I said, I told you in the last program, I said, uh, as disappointing as that result was, do I think, do I see any other coach taking this team to the World Cup apart from what I do? No. He is the person to take them to the World Cup. Because nothing is guaranteed for me. Even if they go to bring Moreno, it is not a guarantee that he's going to win the World Cup for them. So why don't you go with the devil you know than the angel than the angel that you do not know? Let Otoado be. Let him get his taxes right, and Ghana will become a team to, to reckon with again. Okay, Carl, they please still, still hanging there uh, with us. James, do you share the same thing? The same same thing with a lot of angry Ghanaian fans. A part-time coach will give you part-time results. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you know that that's that what Carol said. Uh, when uh, fan, football fans, you only take. Um, one good victory to get them to your side, you know. So it's, it's normal for the fans to um, react like that. I think they are just so pained about the performance of the the team. Because okay, fine, the first. We said it that they need to beat the Caribbean. Yeah, team. you know, the after the game against Brazil, everybody was like, okay, it's Brazil. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the second half they were able to hold their own. Yeah, but then against Nicaragua, I mean, look at the the, the gap between Ghana and Nicaragua. So people are expecting more goals. You know, but you know, you're able to win by just a, a long goal, and a lot of Ghanaians are not happy about the scoreline, about the performance. It's as if it goes to show that, I mean, uh, they are not still convinced about the, the team going to the, not even the new guys in the team now, the Tariq Lamte, Sally Sue, and uh, Inaki Williams. You know, it's like, I mean, they are beginning to get scared now, you know, going to cause, you're not going to be playing, uh, you're not going to be playing in Nicaragua at the World Cup, you're going to play the big boys. And if you're not, if you're not struggling with, Teams like Nicaragua, I mean, how much more against seasoned teams at the World Cup? Portugal, so, Uruguay, Portugal, Uruguay, Uruguay South, South Korea. Korea. Pedigree yeah, you know, so I mean, they are, they are beginning to get scared now. You know, so, I even read, read in some comments, my daughter are saying, uh, I think they should just surrender their World Cup ticket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that it wasn't that bad. I mean, so um, we, we always tell, uh, say, say to Ghanaian fans, we just keep on. Keep praying, the faith. keep the faith. Just Support keep on praying for the, the you know, because as it is now, there's no going back. This is, it's part of the preparation to the World Cup, you know. So uh, let's just hope they're able to peak at the right time. Because I remember the 2018 World Cup, the Russians were struggling during the the friendlies, I and mean, they were all losing every ball. At the World, they were able to get to the quarterfinals, you know. You know when it mattered, I, I just hope that when it mattered most, the 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 Black Stars will raise their game and. You know, turn out a good performance. Let's just hope that these are just blips on along the way. Okay, I think Kyle has actually said that uh, 
most African teams, if you follow history, uh, they do not have a record of, you know, they, it shows that they get to the tournament and they get better. And of course, Nala should give an example of Nigeria and even Cameroon. So hopefully, uh, we hope that the Black Stars will do well. Of course, they are coming. You heard them. They said, okay, when Otando won the Ghanaian, the World Cup ticket, they didn't know that it was um, a part-time coach. But now that things seems to be falling apart, it won't fall apart, uh, they are now blaming him. But let's quickly go on this very, 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 we'll return to talk about Otoado's response after that game against Nicaragua. He's saying he's ready for the World Cup. And he's actually, uh, he, I'm sure he, he seems that he anticipated what Ghanaian fans would say, but he's saying we are ready for the World Cup. We'll be back. Please stay with us. Welcome back, and it's still Niger Super Fans of course, we'll be having us some time here in the studio, and we've been giving most of the uh, time to uh, the fallout of uh, Ghana's friendly game, the one new friendly win over Nicaragua uh, during the international break. Of course, it is over now, and the work of day by day is approaching. And thank you to all our fans around the world for your support, for your words of encouragement, and for criticism also. And uh, we read some of your comments in, uh, in the review of the Nicaragua game, and uh, we are angry, of course. We are also disappointed right in the studio, but all that we can do is to give Otoado and the Black Star uh, our support. Now, Kayode, I'll come to you. It seems Otoado heard what you said after that, uh, in that review, and you said Ghana is ready for the World Cup. And he is saying that he is ready for the World Cup. And I read his quote after that in the again. He said, I'm ready for the World Cup. Everyone, everybody is ready. He said, we qualified. That is why we have to be there. In terms of fact, Ghana has proven that Ghana has proven that we are a, a tournament team. I know we have to improve. Kyle, what is your response to that? Well, I I like I have many things I like about the about the about this the guy Otoado. Number one, he's so self-efficient that when he he made mistakes against in the game against Brazil, he was humble enough to come out and say, you know what, I think I made mistakes. Now he said he's ready. I do not expect him to see, to agree that he's not ready. For me, that would be like killing the morale of his players. Yeah, he has said he's, he has said he's ready. Then he, he needs to walk the talk. We need to see this against uh, uh, Switzerland in their next game before the World, the World Cup. I do not, for me, I do not think this team is worse is is worse than any of the other four African teams. It is just about trying to get ready and pick at at the right time. It would be better if they pick the, by, by the time they play their first game at the World Cup. But if they keep chopping and chopping and removing and adding and subtraction and multiplication now with few weeks to the end of the to the beginning of the World Cup, when will the team gel? When we when will they pick? Because it is key, Femi. It is key that a team should gel be by the time it enters, enters a, a competition, not after it has been knocked out. So for me, I want to agree with Otoado that he's ready. Although he might be keeping his aces uh, on, on that, on that his clothes. I don't have every pro, every, any problem with that. All I want, all, all, all every Ghanaian want, all any African want is for Ghana to do well at the World Cup. So if he says he's ready, he agrees he's ready. And like I said, I am one of his very, very staunch supporters. I support him. I back him to do the job to get Ghana to the World Cup and see what, regardless of the outcome of Ghana's participation at this World Cup, it will not be down to Otoado's fault or lack of uh, experience like your, uh, like our, uh, our viewers uh, said jocularly. He will get what he, what he deserves to get at the World Cup. And that would de de depend on the kind of the quantum of work he puts in, the quantum of work the players put in, because getting to the World Cup is one thing for me. Actually playing and doing well at the World Cup is another thing entirely. There are two different things. Hopefully, the team will pick at the right time and we can have a very, very memorable World Cup like we had in 2010. Hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe a lot of uh, Ghanaian fans will beg to differ, saying that you are you are you are really putting your way behind them. Because some of that comment didn't reflect that. James, I'll come to you. Um, Kyle, they said getting to the World Cup, qualifying for the World Cup is a different thing. Mm -hmm. Doing well at the World Cup is another thing. But yeah. look at Odoa, uh, a lot of people might say the experience might not give him the opportunity to do well. It's the first time he's uh, handling maybe a, a, a national team, Black Stars at that. But with what we have seen so far, do you think 
do you agree that he will likely do well at the World Cup? Let's just put it at that. That okay, let's give him the faith that he will do well. You know, one thing about football is um, is one unpredictable uh, sport. And without a team that is not doing well on the uh, run up to the World Cup, they might get to the World Cup and peak. You know, by the time they start doing well now, nobody remember when they were struggling against Nicaragua, you know, and not doing well. And it's just about the team gelling. I mean, you just, you have you have some new guys in the team who I feel they are still trying to get to know, you know, these players. I believe once they gel, I mean, the team will be unstoppable. Hopefully you know, it won't be, it won't be too late. I, I thank God they are going to play against Switzerland. I think that will we, we provide them another opportunity. To, to you know come together to to know where I remember when Nigeria were going to the US ninety four World Cup. I remember there are some friendly games Super Eagles lost. I remember they lost uh, though that was a heavily uh, every team made made up of home base. They lost to Colombia, they lost to Romania, they lost to Sweden, you know, that was the Super Eagles ninety four. But when they now got to the World Cup, I mean they, they, you saw what they did and they did very well. So for me it's about um, you know gelling and I hope that he, he will be able to. Well, that to, is because West has been with the team. Yeah, I, I, understand? I, I understand. It's more like a different. Otoado was a former Black Stars player. So you understand the, the setup of the team. You know, So it's not as if it's one stranger. Compare him and uh, Chris Houghton, who is more familiar to the Black Stars. It's Otoado. You know, so for me, um, things are not looking rosy now, but I hope that when it gets to the World Cup proper, because this is now it's about business, they will be able to gel. It's about picking at the right time. And I pray that they, if they can pick, I mean, they will become unstoppable. Let us wait and see what they will do against Switzerland, because Switzerland is another top, top footballing nation. You know? So if they can do well against Switzerland, let's, let's, see, let's, see, let's, see, let's see improve. It's about improving. So that's not even about the results. Remember when Nigeria played against Argentina before the, the last World Cup? We defeated them 4 2 in a friendly game. Came back from two go down. When we got to the World Cup, who won? Argentina defeated us, you know. So I thought it was a very bad Argentina, Argentine side, you know. So sometimes when you go to the World Cup, it's a different ball game, you know. So um, like I said, let's just hope the team picks at the right time and the players come to the party. And I believe if they can gel and come to the party, I mean Ghana would be a tough, tough cookie to, to to crack at the World Cup. Okay. Now two games played in the, at the friendly. Now, with one remaining, now do you think by now Tuado will have had maybe out of the 25 man team that we're taking to the World Cup, do you think at least by now he should have had maybe 11, 12, 13 who are starting? I'm sure that he must have seen what, they, what uh, they've done in this frame. Yeah, for him, he came out to say he's ready for the World Cup, which means he must have seen one or two. Yeah, we must have seen things about the, the team. You know, is um, who, who's going to start, who's not going to start, and all that. So for him to come out and say, "I am ready, my players are ready." I mean, he has seen fine. Yeah, will have known those yes, to the exactly. World. You know, so I know a lot of people are they are angry about it. It's about the friendly game for most Ghanaians, you know. But I believe he has seen a lot. But sometimes when you keep losing. Uh, games, friendly games. I mean, the, the morale drops. I mean, the confidence level and all those things. It's not everything that can, you know, bounce back when it comes to. Uh, uh, I remember France before France in '98. The Spanish team were just on beat. They were just creating records and until the Super Eagles defeated a, a very terrible Super Eagles team that struggled during the qualifiers. Defeated them in the first game. <laughs> you know, sometimes this thing you can't predict them the way they. they so for me, um, like I said, that I work out there too. I said. Um, let's just pray the, the like I, I will keep on saying, let's just pray the pick mm -hmm. at the right and let us pick at the walk. That will be the best place to, to you know to get yourself together. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kyle, Richard Ofori was in gold in that uh, one in the uh, defeat uh, of uh, over uh, Nicaragua and he's begging Ghana to have faith in the team. Um, do you think that this time maybe the most have read some of the angry reactions of Ghanaians uh, because he came out after the game to say, please show some faith in us. The, the, the issue at stake for me is Ghanaians are not mad. You understand? They want a team that they can be proud of. So this anger is justified, like I said. It is now left for Otoado to do what is right by Ghana. Ghana, have, they've trusted him enough to hand him the job. And let me tell you one thing for me. What, why do I think Otoado remains the best man for this job? I'll tell you for free. Apart from the fact that he got them the World Cup ticket, we've seen coaches get the World Cup ticket and being sacked immediately after. We saw that in Nigeria several times. But then, because any other coach that is coming is BA, begin again for me. So he's, he, he may not be there yet, but I'm sure that he's building some sort of synergy between him and the players 
Now, if you say you are changing him, you're bringing in another person, it's like you're, you want to reinvent the wheel. And there's no guarantee. If there's a 110% guarantee that the person you want to bring in is going to win the World Cup for Ghana, then I am all for it. I will be willing to even donate to, to call, contribute money for, for his employment. Mm -hmm. Since there, there is nobody that can guarantee that Otuado is still our best bet, let everybody get behind him so that he can do well at the World Cup. Oh, I agree with what the code, the goalkeeper said, Ofori. I, we, we want to trust them, actually. We want to listen and understand and hear whatever it is they want. But the results, the performances that they churn out is not something to encourage anybody. It is not. They have to step up their game. Let us see it in the match against Switzerland. If you need to shed blood, please go ahead and shed the blood. We're talking about Ghana and the World Cup, which comes only once in every four years for me. So you cannot go you cannot afford to go and waste Africa's, uh, Africa's cloth. No, you cannot. That's not Ghana. That's not who Ghana, the Ghana uh, is. So for me, I think it is incumbent on the players. Before they ask us to trust them, they must show that they are worthy of our trust. It is incumbent on Otoado as the manager to really, really own this team, for me. He should own the team. It should, it should show that he's, he's, he's in charge and is in power. Anybody who has anything to come to him, let him stamp his authority on this on the on the on the, on this on this team. That's what I want. Uh, can you please still hang in there, James? Before we go to the Ghana Premier League, let's look at uh, uh, Dr. Koto Kraku. I'm talking about the Ghana Football Association president. He's saying that regardless of the friendly matches, um teams in at the World Cup who underrate Ghana at their own period. Do you agree? Do you think Ghana uh, maybe have done enough with these two friendlies to um, to instill that fear in anything? Do you think so? <laughs> well, uh, you know, sometimes these friendly maybe games... just saying to, to boost the confidence of the players. Femi, friendly games can be uh, deceptive, you know. <laughs> you know, sometimes when, when you... A, a smart team, you know, we look at um, the Ghanaian team and and not take these friendly games. Um, you can't just say, okay, it's, it's Ghana you're talking about. They, they, they also what they did at the 2010 World Cup. It was a young team, you know, they started building from 2010 AFCON, you know, they got to the final 2010 AFCON, got to the World Cup, it was just so unfortunate that the, the, the whole team panned out at the World Cup. You know, I mean, it should, it should be um, a big mistake to, 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 to look at this Ghanaian team down because they are not doing well at the, uh, during the, in the friendly games now, you know. So, um, like I said, it's going to be uh, the, the, the friendlies are, can be deceptive. Um, you know, when, when you now look at the team, that okay, they are not doing well, so you're not going to overrun them. No, the Portugal are going to play against Super Eagles. They, they, they decide to play against Super Eagles because they, they feel there's a kind of similarity between the Super Eagles and Ghana. You know, and they know they played against Ghana before. They, they, they know what they went through to beat Ghana. So the tough call for them. Exactly, and now they are going to play against Uruguay again. Uruguay knew what they went through with Ghana, yeah. you know. So as far as they have played against some African countries, they know that it's not going to be easy. So all of them, they know. So um, the, the friendly game is just to prepare the team, afford the coach the opportunity to to see his team, see his players, work out tactics and all kinds of uh, formation. So for me, um, like he said. Um, it's going to be a big mistake to to, to look at look down on Ghana as if they are not, they are a small they are not a small team you know so for me uh, let's just hope like we always say let's just hope the team it's about picking once they pick at the right time they are going to be a very different opponent at all who knows they, they, they might even qualify from the group stage mm. okay Kyle um okay uh, Kyle let, let's come to uh, the Premier League uh, Ghana now the Premier League in Ghana now uh, out of hope uh, there are reports that they're about to. Uh, appoint a foreign manager and uh, they've sacked uh, Samuel Badu, that is their coach. Of course, he has even uh, written uh, a departing uh, statement to the uh, fans of uh, As of Of course, they've not started this, this season very well and they'll be playing in the Confederations Cup. So, what do you think, Kyle? Well, if, if it's not working, then you need to change it. I, you know what, coaches. There are only two categories of coaches, those who have been sacked and those who are waiting to be sacked. You don't be surprised that tomorrow, the, the coach who, are, who was sacked at uh, Arts of Hope today will be the new head coach in another club. That's how the, the, the chair revolves for, for coaches. It is, it is, it is part of their, of their career. So for me, I, I want to wish him all the best because Arts of Hope are a very, very big club. They cannot afford to not do well. 
they cannot afford not to do well because this they believe this is going to be their season. After winning the FA Cup last season, they want to win the world, the, 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 the league this season and do well in the continent. If they are not starting the league, if they are not starting well in the season, then they have a right to sack whoever they want to sack and appoint whoever they want to appoint. Because at the end of the day, it is the results that count for the fans. That's what they want. They, they, they want. So for me, I, I do I, I will not shed any tears for the for the coach. It is part of the, uh, the nature of his job. I'm very sure that probably in the next few months we'll hear that he has gotten another appointment somewhere. But, but it is the club itself that matters the most because where, where coaches come and go, players come and go, the clubs will remain. So as of all, um, I, I think they've, they've done the next practical thing to do in a situation like this. If it's not working, you change it immediately, immediately. No hard feelings about it, no sentiment. Hmm. Okay, so for emphasis, uh, out of all, they've only been able to uh, garner two points from three games so far in the Ghana Premier League. So I'm sure that that was why the management decided to let uh, Samuel Bar to go. Okay, let's go to Ghana Premier League now. Please just carry quickly. This weekend there's going to be a Tamale City debut. Of course, we'll be, on Sunday we'll be having Tamale City versus Red Tamale United. Uh, Kyle Day, you, you need, remember? I remember at the beginning of the season you said we now have two teams from uh, that city now. So this weekend, just I will we'll be having in England, where of course United will be taking on Man City. We'll be having another city clash in Ghana. Femi, this is where our season starts. After beating, <laughs> after winning this weekend, then our season will effectively take off. After winning this weekend. This this weekend, after we after after be after we be, be winning this weekend. Our season will effectively take up, and then you'll be. You, I, will, I will want you to, to start counting the points as we gather as we gather them. Don't worry. I told you this was going to come in week four. It is here now. Nobody is running away. We're going to win this game and launch our season. You can take that to the bank. So if you people lose, what what will happen? You sack your manager too. So what if we win? What will happen? <laughs> Why are you talking what about us losing? <laughs> Why are you talking about 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 us losing? Why not talk about us winning? Oh, okay, because it's, it's also not been rosy for you guys. You have only one point from three matches. Yes, we we do, but like I said, this is the catalyst for us. This game against our city neighbors is the catalyst to to launch our season, and we are going to seize it with both hands. For me, just wait and see. Okay, okay I take that as that they were going to uh, send the uh, city to uh, to the fight this weekend. But let's quickly take the fixtures for week four uh, in the Ghana Premier League. Of course, uh, out of folk, uh, they will be taking on the Bayern Gold Stars. We just told you that uh, they've sacked uh, Samuel uh, Badu. Then Beckham United will be hosting uh, Kotoku Royals. Unsu and Treman, of course, will be hosting Kerala United. Ashanti Kotoku, remember, they played a 1-0 against uh, at last weekend. And they, of course, this will be their, the second game in the season because of their movement in the Cup Champions League, of course, which uh, they've also been knocked out from. So they will be traveling to face uh, King Faisal. Legon Cities will be hosting Berkham Chelsea. Edwana Stars will travel to face uh, Mejema, while uh, Dreams will be hosting Accra Lions. Then, of course, we later we have Samatex, uh, they will be hosting Great Olympics. Uh, James, two uh, uh, cities, two clubs in the same city, Tamale City and uh, Red uh, Tamale United, do you agree that uh, this could be the beginning of season uh, for RTU as Kyle there has played? As we yeah, you know, so that when you play against your big, uh, your rivals, you know, sometimes when you are able to come out victorious, I mean, it kind of launch your season. Because what a better way to kickstart the season and, you know, getting victory against your your rivals. So for me, um, whichever come out victorious, I mean, that would be a big boost for them. So let's just... I uh, hope that we'll see a, a good game, just like what we saw against uh, between uh, Shanti Kodoko and uh, Arts of Folk. So, it is a city derby, and um, uh, you know what city derby is always like, you know. So, for me, uh, we should expect a big, good outing from both teams, and who knows, maybe we'll get our new uh, the champions of uh, the Ghana Premier League, okay. one of these things, you know. So, I don't see it as <laughs> no, no Leicester, when, Le when Leicester City won the league, nobody saw it coming. So, this, this who knows? Is, uh, this is Red Tamale United, not uh, Leicester. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, don't know that one thing about this team. So. But anyway, to so all our Ghanaian fans, hello, Farabale. That means you guys should come. Of course, we are all angry about the performance of the Black Stars against uh, uh, Nicaragua. But hopefully, like Richard Ofori has pleaded, let's have faith in the team. Kado Bundari, thank you for joining us via video today. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure for me.
All right. Thank you, James Agredi. Thank you for coming. Always today. a pleasure, Femi. And to our producer for always uh, putting things together for us, we say thank you. And to all our fans around the world for always being there for us, we say thank you. Remember your comments, please indicate where you are reaching us from. And you can see drop our comments regarding all the things that we've said. Also, have to say this ready for the World Cup. And of course, uh, what do you think about fellow Galeans saying that uh, part-time coach will give you part-time results? Let's know all your reactions. Don't forget that that notification bell. Click on it so that you can get our videos as soon as they drop. Until next time, I remain Olua Pemi Ashalu. Have fun and a wonderful weekend. Bye for now.